No, that's why I asked you. I didn't tell you. All right. Um, in this example, we have transformation function. What does A really do and why? All right. So there's an important thing I want to kind of look at. When we looked at y equals you know, x squared, then I added in this A. All right. And the important thing is we said, well, when A was less than 0, it reflected the x-axis. Right? But that's all we said. We didn't really give us any other values because h and k, we know that those were shifting. So what if, what kind of number? What if a was negative 1? What if a was negative 2? Um, so on and so forth. So what we want to do is I want to play around and kind of look at some different examples, OK? So when we're looking, let's look at this graph. y equals um, x squared. So you guys can see right now, that's what the graph looks like. If I'm going to go ahead and change this to a 2, right? Oh, jeez. Did, did you guys see anything what the graph is doing? It got skinnier, right? I'll do it like this. So you guys can see that green graph has got skinnier, right? And what if I keep on getting to larger and larger values? What if I do 20? Same thing, right? So what we say is when a is larger than 1, it's actually like stretching the graph. And it's vertically stretching the graph. So when a is greater than 1, it's what we call a vertical stretch. OK? Now, what about if we kind of did that's greater than 1 and we have less than 0. What about the one that we haven't talked about? What about when a is greater than 0, but it's less than 1? So it'd basically be like a fraction. So we could do, how about 1 half? So what happens now when we bring it down to 1 half? It gets wider, right? And actually, we, the way the verbiage we use is it compresses the graph. What about as we get to like 1 20th? Do you guys see? The smaller smaller the number is, the more and more it's being compressed. So when a is between 0 and 1, we call this a vertical compression. All right? So that's vertical stretch, and then we have a vertical compression. Take your book with you. Take your book with you. No, I got one. Oh. Well. Oh. Okay. Um, so that is going to be our A. Okay? Now, let's talk about B. Why did we not talk about B before? Where does B come in, and why is B important? Well, I'm going to tell you B stinks because B kind of messes up everything. So far, we looked at this equation, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Where does b fit? Yes? I have a question back with the a. What if a equals 0? Yeah. Well, if a equals 0, then all of that equals 0. And we're just left with k, which is just a number. So you just have a constant line. So you wouldn't have a parabola anymore or a quadratic. So where does b fit? Well, b is going to fit being multiplied by the x inside the function. Remember we said a was outside the function? b is going to be when you have a multiplier inside of the function. So a multiplies on the outside. b is going to multiply by your variable on the inside of the function. All right? Now, b messes everything up. But for instance, right now, let's just kind of focus look at b for when it kind of b makes sense. First of all, when b is less than 0, when a is less than 0, it reflects the x-axis. When b is less than 0, it reflects the y-axis. <coughs> now, the x squared is probably not a good function to use, is it? Because that's reflective about the y-axis, right? So you wouldn't know the reflection is occurring. But what about if I did y equals the square root of x? That was another function we used. So now, if I do y equals the square root of negative x, you guys can see that the purple graph reflects the orange graph. Does everybody see that? Everybody agrees. Okay. 
Now, let's go and take a look at also some other things that are happening. When A was, let, uh, when A was greater than 1, it was a vertical stretch. So what happens when A is less than, or I'm sorry, when A is greater than 1, I'm sorry, when B is greater than 1? So when B is greater than 1, let's do 2. Oh, shoot, that's. What is it doing? Right, it's kind of, it kind of looks like it's a vertical stretch again, right? Yeah. Kind of make you like, kind of think like, oh, it kind of looks like a nice little, you know, vertical stretch. But it's actually not a vertical stretch. The, the way that we use, um, use this is actually a horizontal compression. Okay, it's a horizontal compression. And kind of think about it, guys, it's kind of the same thing. If you're stretching something, it's kind of like the same thing as horizontal compression, right? Um, so therefore, if 0 is less than b, which is less than 1, that is going to be a horizontal stretch. So it's kind of the opposite of a. And let's go and take a look at that. Let's do, let's say this is 1 half. I'm just going to use 0.5 for simplicity reasons. You kind of, um, horizontal stretch, you kind of see how it's kind of being elongated horizontally, right? It's kind of being stretched horizontally. Do you guys see that? And then if I was going to do, I don't know, um, 0 0.001, you guys can see that again, it's being stretched really, really far horizontally, okay? So that's basically your idea of um, B as far as being a horizontal stretch. All right, and actually I'll do why does B stink next for you guys. Okay, yes? Do it again. B is equal to zero, 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 zero squared is zero, zero, you're just left with K. Okay. So B is never gonna equal zero. That's why, I, again, remember my inequalities? Yeah. There's no equals there, right? So it's not inclusive. So that's why zero is not included. Okay, yes? Um, 